Hey, Boundless. How you doing? You're upset. Um, and uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not vetting you to, uh, well, I think I'm vetting you to give you uh, some of my thoughts on what you said. Um, and I think it, it'd be really hard to express myself without it coming off as of sounding like advice or uh, you should do this. You should get a dog. <laughs> um, but I don't want to, I don't want to tell you what you should do. Um, I can't. Um, I don't know. Um, but, uh, I mean, I couldn't even, I, I could say that I've even had the exact same thing happen to me. Um, but I can't say, well, this is what I did, um, cause I'll feel differently, uh, about the exact same thing. Um, so I guess that's some sort of disclaimer. Um, but I, I wanted to share my thoughts with you about, uh, uh, something similar happening to me. Um, also, uh, I, I've become aware that uh, sometimes that I will observe somebody's actions and then say, uh, oh, they're not having the emotions that I expect. Uh, like, uh, like you might say that your, uh, your ex, uh, the man who fell from Earth, uh, is not feeling uh, strongly or something like that. And um, I'm not sure that you could, you could know that. I, I, th I think that he might have such a different way to cope with uh, strong emotion that uh, that like laughing or trying to be around his friends or you know going to play a game or something like that you might think how could you go play a game or how could you laugh when you feel terrible and that might be why he's laughing and why he's playing those games because he feels terrible and um, that's just you know, the way he copes um, so I would uh, I don't, I don't know, I don't know him or you, uh, but I would doubt that uh, um, he could go through uh, uh, separating from his girlfriend without feeling uh, terrible. It just might be that uh, the way he expresses terrible is uh, is different and uh, subtle. Some people don't, some people, especially guys, some guys just don't want to show any emotion. Um, or maybe even talk about it like that might, might you know the whole idea of like you have close close friends will help you through things um, he might not share any of that with his close friends or if he does share um, give you an example uh, there was a uh, two two guys were uh, sitting uh, in this bowling alley and uh, with they were part of a, a bowling group and uh, a team and uh, one turned the one turned the other and said, uh, "Hey, man, you've been pretty quiet. What's going on?" And uh, the other guy said, uh, uh, "Well, my doctor uh, just diagnosed me with cancer, and so I got to go back next week, and they're going to run some tests and find out exactly what's going on." And the guy, the other guy, looked at him and went, "Man, that's effed up. Can I get you a beer?" And that's all. They said, like, because, and the other team heard it as well. And, you know, the, I think that guy drank for free all night. Um, but no one else walked up with a beer and said, do you want to talk about how you're feeling? Or, um, or if you want to talk, I'm here to listen. Uh, they just bowled. And I think that that's what that guy wanted. He's like, I want you to know that something big's going on in my life because I'm probably going to be quiet a lot. And, uh, and uh, you know, I don't want you to think I'm not having a good time. I'm just, you know, really upset. So like you say, this is why I'm being this way, but that doesn't mean, you know, let's all let's all get around and have a discussion. Um, it's just some some guys just want, actually some, that that guy probably wanted just bowling and laughter, um, and that was how he was going to deal with uh, you know painful emotions. Oh, and uh, I had an experience once similar to yours. And uh, I lost my girlfriend and my house and my job. And I barely had any money, actually. I had just enough money to buy a van, that van, my silver van. And uh, I moved into it while I was still working. I didn't have very many possessions. And uh, continued to work through the winter while living in my van. It was so cold some nights. Some nights at like 3 a.m. I'd have to turn on my van and have the engine. The engine on that van's underneath it, and it'd warm up the body of the car. And I'd be able to turn it off 
and uh, make it through the colder hours of the night. Um, and then as the weather got warmer, I, uh, I quit that job and uh, went to uh, the Canyonlands, went to see the Grand Canyon and uh, um, Mount Z uh, Zion National Park and um, you know, all the Canyonlands, Utah and whatnot. And I think because I was able to separate myself so completely, uh, I mean, that's, this is how I dealt with it. So I separated myself so completely from uh, all the things that were bothering me. Because um, it was the same thing, actually. Uh, you know, my friends were her friends, but, you know, actually her friends were her friends. So they weren't my friends. Uh, and uh, she, she, went, she took steps to make sure that stayed the case. Um, she didn't want any awkward uh, ex-boyfriend amongst her friends. She actually already had one in that group of friends. She didn't want more than one. Um, because she actually chose from uh, from her circle of friends her next boyfriend, so it would have been two ex boyfriends and a new boyfriend uh, amongst her circle of friends, and um, I guess that would have been too high of a number. Though I don't really see what kind of awkwardness I would have, awkwardness I would have added because her new boyfriend was uh, her ex boyfriend's best friend. Yeah, I, I imagine I wouldn't have been a blip on the radar. <laughs> oh man. Um, but uh, yeah, that was—I mean—that's how I cope with it. I was going through, uh, you know, like hardcore, heavy-duty uh, negative emotions, and uh, I just went about having an adventure, taking cameras and smiling and waking up uh, with beautiful vistas out my front windshield. I'd, I'd, sh I'd pull up at a place at night and maneuver my van around and and angle it if I could, so that when I woke up in the morning, I lifted my head up, I'd be looking straight out the front windshield and see something amazing. Um, and so just a summer of traveling, I was able to uh, um, to have such a separation in my mind of, of so much experience between uh, of then and, uh, and my past that when I came back, even though it was a short period of time, um, I felt like it happened a million years ago and maybe even to somebody else. Um, and one other thing, I mean, that's all I had to say about that till, uh, that silly story of traveling the Canyonlands, um, but uh, I don't know if I don't know if I mentioned this to you before. Like your your desire for friendship, or I think that you're almost uh, Grail like uh, um, feelings towards friendship. Uh, i i I don't. I wonder if you've ever experienced something like that. Uh, the whole uh, Sex in the City or uh, Friends, that whole TV like. A group of friends where some sort of magnets holding them all together and you're not quite sure what it is because everyone's arguing having fights and um, and you know having fallouts and misunderstandings but yet they never you know it's just all over with I, like it seems to me that I've experienced things kind of like it but the things I've experienced kind of like it were like those guys at the bowling alley uh, just a really kind of superficial um, how you doing? And I don't mean how you doing. I just mean uh, you say, "Hey, I'm doing great. How you doing? I'm doing great. You want to go for a bike ride? Let's go for a bike ride. Where should we all go? Well, we've all decided. You know that whole thing of like, you know that there's not there's no I in group. <laughs> you know, like um, yeah, you could hang out with a lot of people, but they don't they don't really want to get uh, to you know to the friends thing. You know, like that. Uh, um, they don't want to be friends for life. Uh, they just want to do fun stuff on the weekends, and then they got to go home and um, take out the garbage, and they got they got their job, and um, all those things like like the whole the whole priority of friendship. It's mo almost like an aside, not a uh, not a lifestyle. I guess that's the thing. It's like the the friends and the sex in the city. It's like their friendship is almost a lifestyle. And uh, they're they're mega important to one another. That you know, if it's all poss if it at all at all possible, they're going to uh, have lunch together as many times uh, a week as possible, and make sure they call and check in and things like that. That's like it'd be an amazing thing if that was the, a truthful thing. And uh, everything I've had that's similar has actually seemed way more superficial than just. Uh, um, you know, I almost seem closer to some of the people that I don't have phone numbers to. Like, you almost seem like um, 
it's easier to share, like for instance, uh, you and I to tell you uh, that story um, with somebody that isn't in your life or uh, you know, you're not going to see tomorrow or we're not going to have lunch together uh, three times this week and four times next week um, with our group of close, close pals that we know everything about. Um, yeah. I don't know, like, because I used to think when I was, you know, in my 20s, I used to think that's what I wanted. I used to think that was possible. And uh, different uh, permutation and uh, um, combination of uh, groups of people. Um, or you see a group of people that you think is like that, and then you start to get to know them, and you realize, like, oh, you didn't know that about so-and-so? Like, you know, I was on the outside, so actually people actually shared with me. And then when I got in, uh, you know, part of the group, I realized they didn't share with one another. Like, everybody had that, um, that glossy cutout of themselves that they showed to their friends, and uh, their friends were a kind of escape, not a, uh, not a solution to anything, but an escape from the problems. Um, yeah. Well, I don't know. I go on about that, but uh, it's a confusing thing. I'm not sure there's any answers, but there is. Uh, there is how I feel about it. So, uh, and there you have it. All right, Boundless. I uh, I wish you the best. I hope that uh, your uh, your terrible old job and your terrible old city uh, treat you better, and uh, you're able to. Uh, if you can't get away to the canyon lands, you're able to get away for some sort of fun, some sort of fun that uh, distances yourself from uh, how you're feeling. Because um, some, I mean, sometimes distance and time is the only solution. So, but I'm not giving advice. <laughs> okay, boundless. I'll see you in the tubes.